Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at making props with 3D printed coils. So in my latest project, I put together a pretty large prop. This is a staff inspired by the Tuscan Raiders chief uh, from the new Disney Plus TV show called Boba, the Book of Boba Fett. And this is a pretty large prop. It's built with several pieces and the way they're connected together is with some uh, 3D printed threads. So if we take a look at our cross section here, I want to show you folks how um, all of these pieces feature um, these threads that allow the pieces to just screw together. And there's some things that I've learned about using the uh, coil feature to make these threads and a little bit of um, sketching these out so they're parametric so that you can kind of change the height of the tube and then have the coils parametrically go with uh, with the set of features. So I want to show you folks that. Um, so check this out. Uh, if you want to 3D print your own, I have the files up on Prusa Printers. I have a link in the description. We also have a learn guide here with a fun video. And um, just as a backup, a couple of tips here on 3D printing uh, the pieces, names of the pieces, and just some other things like how big uh, you need a bed in order to print them. So yeah, you can check those out, but uh, without further ado, let's jump into Fusion again, make a new document and kind of iron out how we do this. So I'd start off with a new component. Let's just call it tube. And we're just gonna kind of make a basic tube. Now, normally the way I do it is I'd create a sketch. Maybe I do this and I draw out my thing. Maybe I want a, um, a tube that's about 40 millimeters. And then I'd make another circle and then I'd start figuring out what the uh, thickness of our tube is gonna be by doing a little bit of uh, um, sketch dimensions here. So let's say I want this to be four millimeters and then I'd extrude this out and say like 100 millimeters. So that's cool and all, but um, a lot of the times what I end up doing is the top of this tube would have my connector bit. And similarly, like this tube here, if you wanna um, have two tubes that are flush like this, um, you kind of have to do some, um, you have to make another tube um, as a bit as a fitting that is a little bit, you know, smaller radius. You can see here, this has a radius of 13 and then the outer tubes have a radius of 20. So you can see it's a little bit smaller and you kind of have to make these, um, these uh, connector bits uh, this way. And the other thing um, that's really important is the internal geometry here has a 45 degree angle so you can see here, well, it doesn't say it's 45 degrees, but it is a 45 degree angle thing here. And without this here, if we just had a flat surface here, your 3D printer would um, re either require some, um, it would either require some support material or it would just have a nasty overhang, um, which would be very difficult to print uh, it floating in the air. So with this geometry here, uh, it, it allows the printer to kind of catch itself and then this can print without any support material. So if you notice, all of the tubes kind of feature that, or at least the ones that have these, um, these uh, smaller tubes to connect into the next thing. Um, so instead of drawing it this way, I found it a little bit better to draw out your tubes in uh, sort of as a face profile. So instead of doing up and down, let's do it on the sides here. So I'll pick this. Um, it could be on the front right here, looking at the view cube. So looking at it, not down, but on the side you would make your um, your thing a little bit different. So let's say we just make a rectangle here and our radius is 40 again. And what I'll do is just to center this with the, um, the center origin here, I'll shift select both of these and then bring up my sketch toolbox. And then from here, I'll just say, I want a midpoint constraint. So now this line is always in the middle of this uh, center origin. Uh, and then I can uh, define a height here. So let's say I wanna do like 90, to 90 millimeters and then what I'll do here is I will start sketching out my internal geometry. So what I like to do is just kind of make out the wall that would be the wall, the inner wall. And then I can start doing this little thing here where I have a, a degree and then I can bring this out like that. So now what I wanna do is wanna make a, um, a sketch dimension here of 135. Uh, degrees and then from here or actually I want to make this right here these two distances should be the same thickness so it would be four and then I can figure out um, how much of a radius this needs to be 
So what I need to do now is take a new line and in the center here, I'll draw out my center because the way we're gonna extrude this out is not with an extrusion, but with the revolve tool. So now I can say from here to here will be um, the internal diameter, which I don't know what it was, but I'll just type in a number here and then I'll figure out later. And then uh, I need to define the, the height for this little connector bit. So I'll just say like 18. And now I have a um, little bit more sketching to do because I do need to flatten this out. So I'll say I want this coming out like this and then this straight off like that. So you can do that, no problem. And then uh, this right here, the distance between these two will be that same four millimeter thickness. And then this can be whatever height I want to have. So um, a little bit less than 18, so I'll do 16. That looks fine. And that's pretty much how we can do it now. Uh, so now this blue selected profile is what I'll use uh, to revolve. So I can do a revolve right here. I don't even have to finish the sketch because the sketch model shortcuts here is, is accessible through anywhere. So I can just type in rev and you want to make sure you pick the, the blue one here because this is for solids, solid modeling. All right, for our axis, we, are, um, we pick the blue line here or whatever, this center line. That's kind of why we made it. And there is your shape. Um, so it's a full 100, uh, 360 degrees to close it off, hit OK. And now you can see we got our, our built-in thing. Now, I could have, of course, done something similar here and then done a chamfer, but I found when I'm uh, changing the dimensions of your tube and your connector bit, um, the, the chamfer will error out because if you ever change that, the, the chamfer isn't smart enough to know to update the, uh, the size of the chamfer. So that's why I just built it into the sketch here because no matter what radius I change now, um, it will update. So let's start doing some user parameters. Let's first start off with the thickness. Let's make it four millimeters. Our tube radius or our tube diameter rather is 40 millimeters. And then our connector bit was, oh boy, whatever 13 times two is, it's uh, 26. So I'll type in 26 here, whoops. Um, connector. I don't know what else to name it. So I'll just name it connector. And it was 26. And we can always change those up. All right. So inside the sketch, uh, I can take that 40 right here and then make this the tube diameter. Um, the thickness here will be changed throughout. So I can just say thickness here, thickness here. Okay. And then I kind of want to change this inner bit here so I would basically say the connector divided by two because of the way we are doing the radius as opposed to the diameter here so that's why I put divided by two you see here it changed a little bit that's fine it's really the inner diameter so I can say this connector divided by two minus the thickness and that will give me a more accurate um, diameter. Cool. And let me hide this body because we don't need that body right now. And that's pretty much how I parametricized it. I also want to do the height of the tube. So tube height will be nice to play with. Let's do 90 for now. And this is just the uh, diameter of it, of the connector. I'm just kind of updating this like tube thickness. You can modify these names after the fact, which is very, very helpful. Uh, do another one, and this will be the uh, the connector height, and I believe I had it at 16. All right, so now I can start pumping those numbers in here. So this is the tube height. Whoops, let me undo that. Tube height, I did it wrong. There it is, and then this right here, the, the 16 will be the connector height. Excuse me. And there you go. Now it is parametric. Cool, and I'll bring back body two because that's really what we used. So now I want to come in here. I want to change up the uh, the height. Say I want this to be 150. That goes up there, nice. And that geometry that we built, because it's a revolve, it just it just goes with it, which is really awesome. I like doing section analysis. So I'll pull up that tool and then just select one of these surf one of these um one of these planes, and I can get a nice cross section. So that looks really good. All right. Cool, cool. Now, the next thing we got to do is make two sets of coils, one for this connector bit and one for the inner bit. Now, when I'm using the coils, 
let's take a look at our bah, 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 down here. I want to get a visual of my layout grid. You'll notice that this is in the exact center. I built it that way on purpose because when you're using coils, um, it can get really funky if you do not have if you're trying to draw a uh, thread and your model, your body is not in the center origin, you're going to have some problems. So that's why I'm kind of showing you that you really need to build it in the center of your plane of your grid. Um, so that's why I set it up that way. So let's uh, pull out the coil tool. I just type in coil in my design shortcuts window. Hit OK. I'm going to start off with, okay, so the, so the, thing, the tool is kind of weird. It's like, well, what do I click on? The, where you want to click on is the surface that you want your coil to start on. So in this case, I want to start on right on this, this top surface of the, uh, of the tube right before the connector. So click on that, and you'll notice that the grid has now changed and updated. It's no longer on the bottom of the tube, rather on the surface that I clicked on. Very important. And when you click, the next click you do is you're kind of defining um, the origin. You notice that it's a square here. That's because it's saying I'm locking it into the center there. So you really want to do it that way. And then as you drag it out, you can either click or just type in uh, the diameter that you want. In this case, it's we, we have a thing diameter, a uh, user parameter. So it's called uh, connector diameter, right? All right, and that's already there. Click to accept it. It's red because the operations default to cut. So you can change that to uh, new body. I want it to be new body because we're going to actually move it. And the next thing we'll do is change the section size. Now, you're going to want to change this depending on how big your prop is. This one's a pretty big prop, so I have the section size set to 2.5 millimeters, which is nice and chonky. Next is the section position. I want this to be on the outside, okay, on the outside of our little ring here of our diameter that's been defined. Next, you want to change the section shape. That should say section shape, but it doesn't. It's just a section. So I'm going to change that to external, right? And you can see that now that's starting to look like a coil. The next thing we want to change is, let me just bring this out, right? I like doing that a lot. And then uh, revolution height. Change that to revolution and pitch because you want to change the pitch, not the height. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to leave the resolution to three. And you notice our diameter coil likes to mess with you. So it used to be a user parameter. Now it's not. So we need to put that back in here. So connector uh, diameter is what we want. That seems to accept it at this time. And the pitch, now our section size is 2.5. So if we made our pitch 2.5, you notice that it kind of just kind of eats into itself, which I'm not a fan of. That wouldn't work well. So I add a little bit of, of uh, clearance to that pitch. So instead of 2.5, I'll put a three. And you can see here now there's a tiny bit of gap between those two threads there. Um, so that's kind of how I want it. You kind of want that gap there. Um, when you're 3D printing, filament tends to expand. Uh, so you want to have that little bit of clearance built into your pitch. So that's why I do it that way. And if you change your section size to three, you'll notice that now you need to change your pitch to maybe 3.5 or maybe 3.6. That seems to be a little bit better. So that's why um, I end up doing just a pitch of three, I round it off, and my section size at 2.5, and that tends to work out really well. Um, again, just verify your operation is set to new body because if we were to join it right now, take a look at where it's being built. Uh, for whatever reason, um, this shape likes to kind of build the thing uh, a little bit under where your surface is. So when you hit new body, you can now have the option to, to uh, grab this body that was created, use the move tool. I, I hit the, the hotkey M, M for move, and I can just move this up. And you wanna be aware of this triangle here. If I turn off my section analysis, you get a better idea of what was going on. So before moving, it was gonna just eat into the bottom there. Not a fan of that, so I find it better to just push it up a little bit. Three millimeters up seems fine. Hit OK. And uh, now I have moved it. You see the move is in my timeline there. If I ever want to change it, it's OK. Now I will use the sketch, uh, the, I mean the design shortcut window, and I want to combine these two bodies. So I'll select this tube and that thread. They're joined as the operation. Everything else is fine. Hit OK. And now we have a unified body. If I write, uh, if I do the section analysis again, you can see here that it is closing in on it pretty well. Cool. cool. All right. Now, what's cool about this now, if I change the diameter, rather the height of the tube, because our coil feature selected a surface as a starting point for the coil, now we can update our tube height 
and it will just go with it. So let's say 200 millimeters and you'll see that our, our thing is perfectly three millimeters away because it's all just kind of blending. It's all kind of conforming to, um, uh, to the surface that we clicked on. So that is a really great way to do these coils or these threads. Next up, I need to do the bottom here. So I need to do the bottom coil. So with that selected, our tube selected here, let's go ahead and pull out the coil, click on that. And we want to select this surface, the bottom surface of our tube, like that. And then again, we'll do our, um, our thing. Now you notice here that I have to change the diameter here. I think what we can do is we can say um, the tube diameter, tube diameter, right? And then what I'll do is I'll subtract the thickness. But you notice that the thickness, it needs to be multiplied by two. So I'll put this in parentheses and say um, multiply by two. And that gives me an accurate parametric uh, diameter for our inner coil or inner thread. So we'll have to change up some things. First thing is to make a new body for the operation. For the section size, we'll do the same thing, 2.5. So for our pitch, it's three. And now we need to change up the, um, I'll, again, yeah, the coil doesn't like user parameters as the initial dimension. So we just got to go back into this input box and do that exact same song and dance. So it was tube diameter, not tube thickness, tube diameter um, minus in parentheses, the thickness of the tube multiplied by two. All right, cool. So that should do it there. And then what we need to do is change our position from the outside to the inside because we're now an internal thread. So that means our triangular section shape should be turned into an internal section shape. Now, if we look at it straight down, you'll notice it's kind of hard to see. So you're pretty much looking at a, a perfect uh, diameter here. So the tube diameter minus the tube thickness multiplied by two. And that gives us the, uh, the internal thread diameter that we need that's parametric. Uh, again, verify it's a new body, hit OK. And we need to do the very same thing that we did. You'll notice here that it doesn't start at the bottom like we wanted to, it's just the way of the shape. So we can take that new body, hit the M key for move, and then just move it up. This one you're going to have to move up a little bit more, so I'm going to just do 12 millimeters here. And that's pretty much it there. Now I can do uh, the combine again, pulling up my design shortcuts, hit the combine, hit our tube, hit our thread. Operation automatically sets to join, hit OK, and that is that. So very, very cool. So now when we change the diameter of the tube, let's say we want to go a little bit lower, like 30, you'll see that the coil updates along with it. Right? Yeah, it, it, it updated with it. And because the connector is separate from the tube, um, we can change that up too. So if we want to change the tube or the connector diameter, we can say uh, 28. If we want to make it bigger or smaller, now we have full control over it. So that is how you can uh, you get you get the basics of making a parametric uh, kind of screw fit tube. And you can do all sorts of fun patterns on the outside of this tube. You can use the emboss feature to put textures, knurling, whatever kind of fun stuff you want. But yeah, that is kind of the core essential things that allow uh, something like this to be parametric, where you can go ahead and change up the different diameters and the different um, things. Oh my God, look at that coil, or look at that grid. Looks terrible there. <laughs> yeah, so that's basically the, uh, the main core of making a parametric uh, threaded tube. Um, yeah, I, I really had a lot of fun uh, working on this one. It was a bit of a quick model, to be honest. There's not too much detail, um, but man, it is so cool to make something this large <laughs> that's like uh, two meters long or whatever, and it's all fully 3D printed. It's really cool to just print, uh, to print it in that color, take it off the bed of your 3D printer, and it's just ready to go. The coil's ready to go. No glue, no processing, no sanding and all that. So a lot of fun to do that. Hope this inspires you folks. I'll have a link to all these things in the description of this video. Um, that's going to do it for me. But until next time, I uh, hope you have a great day. Bye, folks.